pronounce you and God among the attributes of God, although they are all equal, mercy shines more brilliance than justice. Bible passages like 2 Corinthians 5 are packed. They overflow with meaning. Nearly every word can have deep impact of how we can anticipate something like the judgment of Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. For example, consider that the passage says each of us, but notice what it doesn't say. You will not be asked to give an account for your spouse. You will not be asked to give an account for your neighbor. You will not be asked to give an account for your friends. You will not be asked to give an account for your pastor. And no, you won't have a lawyer with you. At the judgment seat of Christ, it's just going to to be you and Jesus. This will be the big moment. It might lead you to be uh, to believe that you will be on trial for your sins, but that's not the case. Hundreds of passages of scripture teach the very simple truth that if you are in Christ, your sins are covered. They dealt with, uh, with, done with, and will not be brought up by him again. Hundreds of passages of scriptures, uh, such as Romans 8, part 1, 2, 2. There are. There is no, there is not, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the scrip, uh, Spirit, life has set you free from the law of sin and death. No, if you are in cross, you will not experience his wrath. If you are in cross, this moment will have nothing to do with your sin. It's just about you and him, you and him alone together. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are with me now. I believe that your spirit is within me and yet others. I look forward to that day, to that honest moment when no one else will be around, when pure honesty will be shared. Lee, give me a taste today of what the feast will be like. Amen. Who are you in this story? Who are you? Who? 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 Jesus loved to tell stories. His parables are great because you'll be you'll just be reading alone in the story and you think you understand what he's getting at when all of a sudden smack he hits you in the side of the head Matthew 20 is one of these stories and the smack has to do with who you are in the story for the kingdom of heaven is like a land of the workers and pay them uh, the wages 
beginning with the last ones higher and going on to the first. This is where the smack comes in. The landowner pays the ones who have only worked a few minutes the same amount the pays and the guys who have worked a whole day. Unfair. You are probably saying, yes, it is, but it upsets you only because you probably identify yourself with the wrong person in the story. If you've been working for Christ diligently doing his work for a long time, you will automatically identify with the guys who work all day, complaining probably to yourself about why the last guys get the same as you. But that's not who you are in the passage. This passage is about the last person hired. Who are you, smack? In this story, you are the last person hired, the one who gets far, far more than he has earned. And friends, this is the best news you could have, uh, you could ever hear. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. As you, Lord, humble me in the light of your grace. Deep in my heart, give me a keen awareness that every blessing that I have is a free gift from you. When I compare myself with others, convict me that I deserve nothing, and yet have so richly received everything from you. Amen. The moment you stand before Christ, I never met a Christian who sat down and planned to live a mediocre life. Close your eyes for a moment and imagine into the future. Seriously, close your eyes and imagine. Think ahead to the moment when you will live out. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad.
all of their sorrows and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain for the old world and its evil are gone forever and the one sitting on the throne said look I am making all things new and then he said to me write this down for what I tell you is trustworthy and true modern politicians often end their speeches with a rhetorical flourish that promises a better world for our children and grandchildren such sentiments strike a chord in most hearts who doesn't wish for a better world for the rising generations politicians may come to banishing poverty providing quality education putting an end to war or starting health insurance for all noble sentiments all but desperately difficult to achieve it's interesting to note that the one sitting on the throne didn't promise to make he this a better world he announced a new one he said look i am making all things new that is precisely what john saw he records then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared the reason for this drastic action the disappearance of the old and the creation of the new is explained the old world and its evils are gone forever the evils that pervade this old fallen world can never be eradicated by the best government or the most enlightened politicians evil is too deeply ingrained the world will not ultimately be perfected as evil in incrementally abolished this world as we know it will be abolished and a new one established in its place this is the message of john's vision of the end but who can accomplish such a feat and produce an environment where there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain the answer is the one sitting on the throne whose self description is i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end stands to reason that the only one who can legitimately bring about this world the the beast is the one who brought it into being and the only one who can deal with the problem of evil which is responsible for all that is wrong with this world is the one who is in intrinsically holy righteous and just the alpha and the omega and he will the vision of the ultimate conquest of evil and the establishment of a new heaven and a new earth has led someone to assume that nothing needs to be done about this world's ill but compassion and love insist that even if we cannot eradicate evil we can certainly all evitate it and we must never forge that when political promises of a better world disappoint the divine assurance of a new world helps us hope to a hope in the midst of death sorrow crying and pain what god can do in and through you i am not judgmental you are just an overly sensitive idiot when we are living by the law rather than by grace when we are walking in the flesh rather than the spirit it is so natural to judge others to justify ourselves if you want to leave yourself out why not cut everybody else down why not set up your own little judgment seat so that you can categorize other people's stuff as good or bad do then why do you judge your brother or sister or why do you treat them with uh, uh, contempt for uh, he will all stand before god's judgment seat it is written as surely as i live say Bound. 
before me every time we'll acknowledge God so then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another listen God's judgment is coming not only is it his job to judge perfectly and graciously but your judgment on other people are going to end up in the worthless pile that goes up in flame. Second Corinthians 5, part 9 to 10 again puts it in perspective. So we make it our goal to please Him whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due in us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. What is your focus today right now? Have you naturally slid into judging others or are you looking forward to that day when he will judge your stuff? Life on earth is hard. But knowing the judgment seat of Christ is coming makes it all worthwhile. Don't focus on others. Simply respond to the Spirit's work in you and through you. Jesus, your word says that I am in you and you are in me. Open my eyes today that I might see moment by moment the works that you are ready to do through me. Amen. Your greatest reward. What meaning have you found? What truth do you claim? For what purpose are you living? Life itself raises, raises these questions. How can anyone help us live what and why when surrounded by an infinite, infinite sky? The worst ride that I had taken with my family through the wilderness of Texas was nearly a perfect day. For six hours I rolled with those I loved. Father, I thank you for your biblical truth. 
Satan's lie. 
when the woman saw that, that the fruit of the tree was good for the food and pleasing to the eye and also uh, desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. What happened? Then Oma, they got hooked on the first hook shape. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they uh, realized that they were knocked of uh, genocide. Right after shame, they were pierced by blade. The man said, the, the woman you put there here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. The woman said, the serpent the, deceived me and I ate. It was a terrible blame game. The man blames the woman, he blames God, and she points the finger at Satan. Then finally they got snagged with consequence. With painful labor you will uh, give birth to children through painful toil. By the sweet of your brow you will eat your food, for thus you are and to thus you will return. When Satan promises you something, it's just a lure but, uh, with a tree branch hook in it, the hooks of shame, blame, and consequences. With what specific temptations are you being baited right now? Do you see the three hidden hooks of sin waiting? Father, give me insight to see through the lies of sin. Spare me from the shame, blame, and consequences of the sin that so easily entangles me. Amen. Get fired up to run the faith race. Keep the faith alive and strong. Christianity is no more than one generation away from a extinction. What the coming generations need is a, a healthy church made up of people who are not taking a stroll in the park but who are running a race. Find rest in God's promises. Our focus this point is to help you embrace God's promises of an abundant life of peace and hope, especially at such a time as this. When the world tells you Although not actually physical, the 
power of sin is much like a parasite that has found its way inside your body. What shall we conclude then? Do we have any advantage? Not at all, for we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. When we become a believer in Jesus Christ, we become a new creation in our spirit, and the Holy Spirit comes to live inside us. Yet, this parasite of sin still lies within us, but it's not us. When your mind receives a life from the evil one, the power of sin will take that life and twist it into our own language, and we will think our thoughts. It even feels like it is coming from us, but it is not. Sin is an imposter. His strategy is to introduce thoughts into your mind and deceive you into thinking they are yours. We are righteous in Christ, not in ourselves. The power of sin is still in us, but we don't have to say yes to Amen.